you mentioned his preparation, right? How many times over under set the line at one and a half? How many times has Phil Helmuth used uh, Pio Solver? You know, opened it up himself and gone, gone yeah. exploring. Yeah, lean I under mean, on I, that one. I don't know, man. He certainly has talked somewhat disdainfully about about modern day stuff, but then he doesn't, you know. And it's just, it's just one of these things. It's like if we go down that road, you know. And there's the, uh, it's just probably not, you know. I right. would play his ass heads up. I'll tell you that. You know, you'd play him for anything. Yeah. Yeah, I play I try him some. And if he's in a tournament, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna play my cards the way I play them. He'll play his the way he plays them. And we'll see. It's all about grasping EV and and not, you know, minimizing and just you gotta play millions of fucking hands to to know at the end of the day. But this bet is a start. I was surprised Daniel came after him like this though. It's sort of like I don't really you know, a lot of sports, by the way. The guys in their 50s aren't exactly hanging in there with with the youngest, best players. So I, I kind of don't even get the whole storyline. Like, like Phil's career speaks for itself. The whole argument, too, about the high roller scene versus the break. It's like, yeah, it, yeah, it would be great if, if the best players in the world truly were ranked and it was clear and fans could could really know, like, man, you know, that they, they know, like, when you think of No Limit, you think of, you know, Nikki P and fucking Ali Mshirovich and the German, these Russians and like some, you know, extraordinary player. Ike, it's like the first name that comes to mind. I get it that that community might feel a bit something, some kind of way when Phil does his thing. But at the same time, like he's grown the game, you know, like a lot. So I, I just don't know. I, I don't know, man. But uh, but we'll see. I mean, well, along those lines, Nick, Ali, has it become a, a- somewhat tiresome storyline to you that Helmut doesn't get any respect, Helmut doesn't play any GTO, et cetera, et cetera. Are you tired of having to go back to that same storyline again and again and again throughout these broadcasts? If at any point I felt as though the storyline was no longer applicable, then maybe I'd tire of it. But I think that yeah. as, as long as the modern era of poker, and obviously it's kind of a gray area as to when we determine when that is, um, but as long as, as I can remember it, it's, and as long as it's been around, I feel as though it's been brewing and I don't know that it's fading. I think that there's still, you know, there's people that are diehard. I mean, I read the Twitter replies and I look through the streams and obviously that's just a, a small quotient of, you know, overall public sentiment that, you know, a lot of outspoken people have polarized opinions. But um, there's a lot of folks who just will always have that attitude, lock the doors, I'll play them forever. You know, uh, let me get Adam heads up. Let me, you know, put him in a small field or I'll take the field and you take him and I'll lay a price, whatever it is. You know, nobody seems to believe in what it is that he does. And Nick, you know, uh, he saw the same match I did against Antonio. And, you know, granted, a lot of people might question Antonio's capacities now that he's really transitioned to just being, as he calls it, a pro fish, you know, playing a lot of private games, playing against a lot of rec players and adapting master fleets at those sorts of games and cash games, you know, coming back in and having to face somebody in a, you know, tournament format like that somewhat, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's fair to say maybe that wasn't the right opposition to in with, with which to evaluate Phil at present, but uh, you know, I'll tire of the storyline, Jeff, when I feel as though the guy has the respect that he deserves. And regardless of, you know, where he is today in the in the continuum and in the grand scheme of things, I think it's just undeniable that he still has the ability and the willingness and the faith in himself to go out and tackle, you know, these these younger players, you know. And and honestly, he's a mass self promoter too. So when we were talking about the pile solver situation. I'm wondering if he did, would he be spoken about the fact that he is using those things? Because wouldn't that somewhat begin to force us to, to consider him as having adapted and transitioned and, and no longer being this highly delineated entity in poker? And he's more, you know, not trying to beat him, but joining him. So if he was using them, I don't know that he would say anything about it. If he was putting solvers to work, and, and honestly, I'm not sure he's not. But I think that it would obviously, when you're looking for every little angle that you can get, it would benefit him not to fight about having done Hey, everyone. This is No Gamble, No Future. All the sports betting and Brent, really just all the pure degeneracy. You got to risk it to get the biscuit. Mm. Like and subscribe. Please?